Assalamu alaikum. Have you ever given advice to someone in private with wisdom and kindness, but it seems that you're almost always met with a variety of prepackaged slogans? Have you ever wondered why this impulsive behavior just keeps growing? This is what I personally call the Muslim convenience card. This whole process happened gradually. When the first generation Muslims were told something is wrong or haram, their reaction was, haram is haram. The reaction of the second generation was, I guess it's haram, but it should have been said nicely. And the reaction of the third generation is, who are you to say it's haram? This sounds exactly like our first Muslim convenience card, which is, who are you to judge? Number two, sinners blaming sinners for sinning different. Number three, Worry about yourself, number four. You don't know my struggles, number five. Are you the Haram police? And number six, which is the most infamous of all, you don't know what's in my heart. So where did we get these standard replies from? Well, they permeate our culture in so many levels and we took them and ran with them without reserve. So the question is for us Muslims, do these cards work for us? Let's take a look. We have two categories, postmodernism or subjective morality on one hand and Islam or objective morality on the other. If you're hearing this word for the first time, this is how Professor William V. Dunnan defines postmodernism. And I quote, a worldview that emphasizes the existence of different worldviews and concepts of reality rather than one correct or true one, unquote. Now I can understand how using these cards under postmodernism is acceptable because truth here is relative and so no one can judge the other. At the end of the day, it remains a personal choice or preference. So there's no such thing as absolute right or wrong. Now under Islam, things are the complete opposite. For example, when someone says it's haram to drink alcohol or eat pork, a Muslim can't pull out the who are you to judge card or you don't know what's in my heart card. Why? Because in Islam, it is absolutely wrong to do any of these things. So what we're doing is we're borrowing slogans that are not rooted in either the Quran or Sunnah, and we're trying to make them fit under Islam, and this is precisely why things are mixed up. Let's take this even a step further. Hijab under a postmodern mindset is oppression. Under a Muslim mindset, it's modesty. Revelation under this category is Fairy tale under this category, it's truth. A man's protective jealousy or ghayra under a postmodern mindset, it's an insecurity. Under a Muslim mindset, it's chivalry. Rights and obligations between both sexes under this category is discrimination. Under this category, it's justice. Enjoying good and forbidden evil under the postmodern mindset is being judgmental. Under a Muslim mindset, it's called a concern. Commands and prohibitions under a postmodern mindset, they're viewed as an infringement on one's liberties. Under the Muslim mindset, they're viewed as an assurance to one's well-being. As you can see, these definitions are quite stark and it's for this reason that knowing how to properly define terms is probably the trickiest thing facing us Muslims today. It's evident that Islam and enjoining good and forbidding evil are inextricably linked. In the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, verse 110, Allah says, You are the best nation produced for mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. In Surah Tawbah, verse 71, Allah says, The believing men and believing women are allies of one another. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong. So no, Islam is not about looking for each other's faults, but it's also not about pulling out these convenience cards whenever someone admonishes us. In fact, not accepting admonition from one another comes with dire consequences. Allah tells us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 78, Cursed were those who disbelieved among the children of Israel by the tongue of David and of Jesus, the son of Mary. That was because they disobeyed and transgressed. They would not forbid one another from the wrongs that they committed. Surely evil is what they had been doing. You see here, the abandonment of enjoining good and forbidden bad results in the curse of Allah. And it's for this, we should help one another by letting go of these cards for good. If you're still reluctant, then consider watching the next video titled, Why Muslim Convenience Cards Don't Work.